hello family hello my beautiful people welcome back to my channel if you are new to this channel my name is woven and if you are returning thank you very much family for returning back to our channel guys i want to especially thank you for a warm welcome back to youtube for the grace extended for the period i was away you guys were very very warm-hearted and welcoming and thank you very much for that i've tried to answer as many people as i could i did not get to everybody but a heartfelt gratitude to everyone and simon my brother i hope you are watching this is a special shout out to you now guys as i indicated in one of our videos this year we're really looking at we're focusing on financial wellness financial literacy and you would have seen that in my downgrade video i'm, I'm seeing a lot of positive reactions coming out of this uh, videos positive conversations and that's really the aim so thank you very much for engaging and as the video suggests today guys we are going to talk about budgeting now budgeting right there's lots of material online when it comes to budgeting whether it's just a normal explore google or youtube but i've realized that or i've come to learn that someone learns easier or they adapt easier when someone who they can relate to is talking about a certain subject matter for when I talk about familiarity, it's really background, jurisdiction, you know, experiences, gender, all those things contribute to how a person relates to a person. And today specifically, I'm looking at my Namibian family. You know, we in Namibia, in terms of financial literacy, we're lagging and we're not having enough financial, personal finance conversations as we ought to be having. The term conversations is defending me. The term conversations is defeating me but it's okay so yeah as i was saying we're not having enough financial personal finance conversations in namibia that's why today i'm really looking at my namibian family but but guys the language of finance is universal and therefore this does not exclude my family outside of namibia south africa africa the rest of the world budgeting is budgeting money is money so still we can do it together before we continue i would like to thank metropolitan for being a, a proponent of financial literacy and really partnering with me on this video and to that just when i do my financial literacy pitches around to young professionals i often get the question of where can i invest my money where i do not have access to it because the will is there to invest the money it's the discipline that's lacking so i would like to thank metropolitan they have come up with an innovative solution called met invest this is really to address clients poor value of money for the stakeholders as well so what is met invest essentially it's two pocket it's a two pocket based solution where you can invest but you can also have access to some of your funds and not all of them they are cognizant that some needs may arise so you have a minimum investment of five, I mean, investment term of five years, and you can invest from a minimum of 3000 and you can top up on that. Now, you know, they have a minimum investment of 3000 per month, or you have the option of $500 per month on your Met Invest account, but you also have the option of withdrawing. So it's flexible in such a way that the minimum 3000 you cannot touch for the tenure for that period that you're investing, right? But if you have any additional funds that you then add into this, you can touch those funds, but it's after the first 24 months again. So it gives you that leeway to build up your account, your savings account without touching that money and after two years you then have access to only a certain component uh, and then after that again on a yearly basis so you can build your funds but they are cognizant to the fact that needs may arise you don't necessarily need all your money but you can have access to some of your money so you may not have access to the minimum that's required so if it's 500 dollars a month that 500 a month remains but if you then decide you're adding on another 500 or another thousand then that's a portion you have access to so really um this time around i'm going to leave some of their trusted financial uh advisors in the description box please contact them um and and essentially get your met invest i also like met invest guys this is my personal opinion I also like Met Invest because it's not commission based. So often in the market, you will see that a lot of products pay upfront commission. This one is really tailored for the client. And perhaps, just perhaps, I'm not saying that's the reason, just maybe that's the reason why you haven't seen your advisor sell it because it's tailored for the client. And it's not commission based. So thank you very much, Metropolitan. We then are going to get back to our video. 
now with with budgeting right there are various methods of budgeting this the zero base method envelope method but today we're going to look at the most simplified it's beginner friendly you know you can start here and you can graduate you can find your rhythm eventually but the idea is to start very important the idea is to start and we're going to look at the 50 30 20 budget method you know it's not a one shoe fits all but like i said it's a foundation now also budgeting family budgeting is the core of your personal finances right so if you then want to take care of or to take ownership of where your money goes you need to have a budget now often when we talk about budgeting this term can become quite daunting because someone is thinking sophisticated uh, excel sheets now i must do v lookups i must do complicated things but really budgeting simplified and this is what we are going to look at today is essentially you telling your money where it should go you're giving your money direction you're looking at you're accounting for your income you're planning for it and where you are spending your money because if if you don't tell your money where to go it will go anywhere you know money is fluid money is liquid like that so it will go anywhere so it would go to your shopping cart empty cart zara cart <laughs> you would empty your cart you know clothing accounts the outings with friends that's where your money will go to the guys you are always having sunday poiki with with the guys it's always you hosting that's where your money will go to so it's very important to have a budget now obviously within your budget you also have leisure time but we'll get to that now when you look at a budget right i think everyone should have a budget and we are cognizant of the fact that there are just some people that can't make ends meet however we're not oblivious to that fact but still even if you can't make ends meet you should have a budget to say this is actually where my money goes and this is why i'm barely making it you know perhaps there's still room to make some adjustments perhaps there's then room to learn to earn additional income when we talk budgeting it's really important to have a written budget guys taking mental notes is not budgeting because budget you do it before your money then comes in to say when my income comes in this is what i'm spending it on and you don't you can't do mental notes for example businesses businesses that excel you know take time to actually do strategies just around their budgets and their reviews to make sure that they actually budgeted accordingly and they don't keep a mental note in the ceo's mind to say okay guys we keep the budget in the ceo's mind and because he knows exactly what our salaries are what rent is and all those things they have a written budget and they review every month so you are the ceo of your personal finance and essentially you should do that and today i'm going to hold your hand and i'm going to show you just the basics that's basic it's straightforward it's not complicated i'm going to show you what budgeting looks like okay so we're taking it back to old school guys this is my notebook a lot happens in here but we are going to write in here today this is a clean page so what we are essentially looking at is our 50 30 20 rule budget don't mind my handwriting all right okay so what is the 50 percent so we say then 50% goes towards our needs, 30% goes towards our wants, and your 20% goes towards your savings, your debt, and for me, I, is, I always include giving. Now, what are those needs? What would you consider a need? So we'll then say our needs... And I'll show you guys a, a budget. It's firstly your housing. So this is your rent, your house, your bond. Then transportation, you need to get from point A to B. You need to get to work. You need to get to hospital. You need to drop off kids. And then that will also include your car payments. Right? Transportation can be taxi also or fuel. That you can't do without, right? And then we need to bring in our groceries here. 
and then we look at bills and utilities water and electricity we cannot do without <laughs> health insurance okay i said um health insurance i wanted to adjust the phone just for it to be a bit clear because i realized it was skew and then we move on to our ones guys it is very important to budget for your ones right please do not deprive yourself off of your ones because it work quite hard i hope we are working hard to earn this money so what do my ones entail so travel would fall under the entertainment so where you are entertaining the boys with your poiki course <laughs> shopping whatever it is you know hunting if you go hunting if whatever it is you know restaurants this would essentially form a part of your wants what you do not need to be alive is considered a want guys and then our last one is obviously our 20 percent which is savings our debt and giving so under here this is then essentially where you start saving for your emergency fund yo this my, my spelling is being put to test guys <laughs> Then your debt payments, I think we'll do a video on each of these just to break them down. Let me know if that is something I should do. Your debt repayment, your credit cards, your car payment. Then you're looking at your retirement savings. Guys, I don't think we give enough attention to retirement planning and saving for retirement. And then we also look at investing. Right? So this is then what should be included in your budget right of course different people will probably have different items in here but these are the basics that you then want covered now let me show you guys what my budget looked like at some point so i'm not showing you guys my budget actually because my my budget has since gone from a 50 30 20 rule and it looks completely different and this that i'm showing you is a budget of a client that i assisted sometime last year i assisted them just to properly draft a budget no i no longer have capacity to assist guys if you're going to ask to assist with crafting that's why i'm making this video for all of us then it's not one-on-one -on -one. so unfortunately i will not be able to assist on an individual basis now of course as you can see on the right side or would that be my left on the one side you have they have their income they have their salary and you know this is someone that's quite serious i was quite impressed when we were crafting this budget they have a bit of consulting that they do and then they actually this carpooling is people's kids that they drop off at school before they go to work it's not other adults so they get a bit of income from that so in total as opposed to just getting their twenty five thousand, they then have a bit of an additional income and i'm glad they actually employ this because we had spoken about is it two two years ago and i said think of ways you can generate income um outside of your salary not to just be dependent on one source now in my house growing up my parents were always business people so there were business people at home we either have a cooker shop and i adapted that guys i always have one or something that's earning me an additional income even if it's not much even if it's just 500 it makes a difference and i would encourage if you can with your talent do something teach um walk dogs do something to earn a little bit of income to just um substitute your salary so the income is 100 percent right and then on the right or oh, that will be left now you then have your you divide now 50 percent then goes to their needs their fixed needs which is their housing the rent this person earns that one thousand but their rent is six thousand now the rationale behind that and i applied and i taught it to my client to say when you are looking at rent, when you are looking at your bond, when you are looking at housing, try to stay within one third of your earnings. And this is something I've done all my life. If I'm renting, my rent should not exceed more than one third of... of oh, did I just give you guys ideas? It shouldn't exceed one third of whatever my earnings, total earnings are for that month. And I have carried it through and through. It's just good discipline. Then you also have room to, to, to make use of your money in other areas. So your needs, that is how it should look like. And you guys, when you're writing a budget, be as honest as possible to yourself. It's your budget. 
you don't need to 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 show it to the world write down all these things because then you are able to track to say okay if this is what my budget should look like this is currently what it looks like all my money is going towards clothing accounts or or 50 or 60 percent of my money is going towards rent then if in my previous video i've showed you uh, i've shared ways on how you can save then you can start employing those methods some of those strategies to say if i earn 31,000 and my rent is currently 19 then surely maybe i need to move to a cheaper place or you know i need to get somebody in to share this with me or whatever you, you need to make sure that it's at least within one third of of whatever your earnings are and then you have variable expenses guys this one's change and i put black text there or i put black text there because it's very important and and for me personally i, I always say we will black text our families out of poverty and we'll be fine Fortunately or unfortunately, some of us are first generation, right? So we are the first generation to take that leap to, we are going to be the generation that sort of takes the knock so that those that come after us are then a bit better off. And if that means that's what we should do, then we are going to do that and we are going to be okay. Of course, it's one thing, we will talk about black tax in another video. I will actually have a couple of guests to talk about black text but personally i plan for it because i also find it as a way of giving back to community you know and i just think to whom much is given much is required budget for it because that's also how you then you are able to manage your family if additional things come up you also communicate to say guys i have only allocated two thousand this month therefore everybody else can wait for next month but budget for it so that you are also not frustrated in the process. Now, that is your 30%. This 30% again, as your earning capacity increases, as your responsibilities may be reduced, it can also change. It can then become 20%. For example, if you are earning 150,000, of course, your lifestyle is probably different. But if you're spending 30% on once every month, of course, if I'm Bill Gates' daughter or if I'm Warren Buffett, the conversation is different yeah but yeah that will change is is your earnings and your wants and your interests change but essentially 30 percent should be not more than that then you are probably overextending yourself and then the last one is a 20 percent guys so the 20 percent i always say your savings your debt your your giving then falls within this arm now if you have a lot of debt you can actually accelerate it and you can switch it to say 30% is then going towards my savings debt and whatever. And 20% is then going to go towards my wants. And then savings, you know, we all know by now, hopefully. Or if you follow me on Instagram, you know, emergency fund. And then we need to save for medium to long term. And then essentially tithing. So 10%, um, I'm Christian. So 10% monthly basis is for tithing. Or if you believe in... Um, if you have any other beliefs maybe you are i don't know you know this can be for philanthropy you you donate to an orphanage whatever but yeah if you have i think you should give and black tax or family tax that's not constitute part of uh charity guys those are our family members and we ought to take care of them of course it's not a must but i think it's a good thing to do so yeah that is essentially budgeting now here is the thing with budgeting don't beat yourself up don't beat yourself up what's important is that you start and then you start uh, implementing discipline you might not get it right on the first try you know in the first month you might you know that is the plan but somehow you dipped into your savings don't or you dipped into whatever you budgeted don't beat yourself up get up and try again <laughs> yeah but really that is budgeting guys i think it took me quite some time for me to get to to where i am Obviously, with much more discipline, I might have been a bit further, but I'm glad that I, I stuck to it. Even when I failed, I, I still tried. So give yourself room to, to breathe, to fail, to start again. But what's important is that you must start. So family, that is really it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned. Let me know how the budgeting goes. Let me know where we are adjusting in terms of our spending habits. Ladies, I know that card. I'm a victim of that card, so let me know. Um, and I will see you guys in our next video.